Okay, so in this video, we are going to talk about triangles. Triangles are amazing, um, mostly because whenever you're doing, you know, geometry, you can be like, you know how you can assume the cow is spherical? You can kind of assume the whatever shape is basically a triangle or break it into triangles. Anyway, triangles were like kind of one of the first things that we got to learn about as people. It's pretty cool. So there's a Pythagorean theorem. You've heard of him. He's kind of cool. He came up with this whole a squared plus b squared equals c squared thing. This is like whenever you're watching cartoons and they're trying to look like really smart in math, they usually have this written on the chalkboard behind them. That's how you know that they're like legit. Well, what's kind of cool about this is for some reason, there are certain integers that perfectly fit um, into the Pythagorean theorem. So uh, specifically, these are called Pythagorean triples. So like if I put a three, and I go three squared plus four squared, that's nine plus 16. Well, that's equal to 25, which happens to be five squared. So three, four, and five, three, four for A, and then five for C is a Pythagorean triple. Um, there's other ones like eight squared plus 15 squared. So eight squared is, hold on, I could do this, 64, and 15 squared is 225 because I did number sense in high school. And that equals some kind of a nine and a eight and a 289. And if you super hardcore did number sense at some stage, you know that that's 17 squared. So another Pythagorean triple would be eight, 15, 17. Now, oops, if you just try this with random numbers, it doesn't, oh, apparently I can't, um, what do you call it, erase, but there we go, look at me, I can erase like a pro. 8, 15, 17. Now if you just pick random numbers, like, oh, I'm gonna make my own Pythagorean triple. triple. I'm gonna go five squared plus six squared. You've got 25 plus 36, and that's gonna be equal to 161. Well, that's a prime number anyway, so like that's, I mean, it's true that this is, this does meet the requirements of the a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but it's not a Pythagorean triple that we care about because it's not something that's just gonna like roll off the tongue. Okay, so that said, there are a certain set of numbers that all work. So um, we're only gonna really worry about memorizing this set of four. And the reason we do, honestly, like everything in this class is because of like stuff that, you know, I don't know, like you're gonna be doing a homework problem and they're gonna give you this, and then they're gonna just like keep talking, and you'll be like, what's the other number? And if you know it's Pythagorean triple, you can be like, oh yeah, it's five, and then you're like, wait, you whatever. So essentially, that's that's what we're doing here. Um, ah, so we're gonna do that. Um, what's also important to note is that anything that's a, what do you call it, a, a multiple of these uh, variant values would also work, so, um, I guess I can go back to this one. So if I had six squared plus eight squared, that would be, ah, where'd you go? 36 plus what, wait, we already decided that was 64. So that's a hundred, so that's 10 squared. So, I mean, technically you could say six, eight, and 10 is a Pythagorean triple, but that's really just that, you know, times two. So, um, a lot, sometimes you'll also see them in the book where they'll be like this and they'll be six, eight, and you'll be like, oh wait, that's just a three, four, five. Oops, three, four, five, kind of a thing. Okay, so we memorize these because it makes our homework go faster and it makes tests go faster and no one on a test or homework assignment has ever said, man, I had too much free time on this. So here we go. So we see something like this, it's a three and a, and at five. Now, the only thing that you have to remember is that these biggest numbers, shockingly, because they're the, um, they're always the hypotenuse, um, the biggest number has to be the hypotenuse. So three, four, five. And what I'm trying to say is if you saw three, five, this is not four, because the five has to be on the hypotenuse side, if that makes sense, right? Okay, so if that was three squared plus five squared, that would be, the square root of 34. Well, I guess I should say 34 and then, yeah, but you get it. Okay, let's see what else. Four, oh, I did it. Okay, so we have seven blank 25. So clearly, clearly that number we go is 24. And then we have six, eight, and over here is gonna be 10. Okay, because this is a three, four, five. 
it's just times two times four, I mean, sorry, three times two, <laughs> four times two, and then this would be five times two. Now, note that these triangles are completely in no way to scale, like this is theoretically seven and this is 24, and that's because when you're looking at the textbooks and problems and whatever, like sometimes they don't make any sense. So we're just trying to get you used to that. Okay, so doop to doop to do to doop to do to doop to do. Okay, so now where all this kind of comes into being interesting is uh, say you have a square and you cut it in half that way. So you have two sides of this, uh, you basically made yourself a little triangle and it's got two 45 degree angles. And so doop to doop to do, because we know a squared plus b squared is c squared, this is, um, side here is the square root of two. Now, technically, technically, this is not a Pythagorean triple, so I just don't want you to get confused. This is not a Pythagorean triple, but this is still special. Okay, and it's special to us because we see 45 degree triangles a lot in, I don't want to say nature because like nature just does its thing, but we see them happen a lot. So essentially what that tells us is that anytime, um, basically I'm just trying to help you get your homework done faster. These are just tricks for all of that. So one trick is Pythagorean triples. Second trick is recognizing 45 degree triangles. So the idea is if you have a triangle and you have um, a single side, whatever it is, if this is one, the other side is one because it's a, what do you call that? Isosceles triangle. And then the third side is going to be that times the square root of two. So if this was 10 and this was 10, then this would be 10 times the square root of two. Make sense? Maybe. Okay. So for example, let's look at this first one. So if this side is three, um, obviously if this is 45, the other one is 45. So I have three, three. And then this one is three times the square root of two. Okay. Like that's just, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you could like for each one of these problems on a homework assignment or on a test be like, okay, so if that's three, then that one's three. So it's three squared plus three squared equals nine plus nine. So that's 18. So C equals the square root of 18. So that's the square root of nine times two. Why did it do that? So that's the square root of nine times two so that's three squared to two so absolutely you can do that um this is really just a way for you to get through homework problems faster so whether or not you see them in nature they're going to be all over tests and homework um and just the quicker you can do those and, and also even if it's not like in the field if you're like okay well that's like maybe a 43 degree angle but you could just say well it's basically 45 so that means I can kind of estimate. And that's really what people would do, you know, in real life is if you kind of know some of them, you can be like, oh, it's kind of like this, it's kind of like that. Um, back before people had calculators, they would have half angle formulas and they would have all these other things memorized. Anyway, so the whole point is you should learn these and I'm just trying to help you um, do this. It just, it just saved you five seconds a jillion times. Okay, so ideally, Pause the video and see if you can figure out what the other sides of the triangles are without doing the Pythagorean uh, theorem just by actually looking at it. All right, so we'll pretend you did that. Okay, so, okay. So we're gonna look at this one next. So this is five square root of two and this is on the hypotenuse side. So wherever the five square root of two is, that's since it's on the hypotenuse side, that that means that this one would need to be just the five by itself, right? Because I know that this is this times five square root of two, so if I divide by square root of two, I should get that side. That side and that side are both gonna be the same, okay? This next one's a little bit more annoying because this is seven square root of two, so that's seven square root of two. And I know that this side is those two times the square root of two. See how it's tricky, yeah, that was mean. So it's 14, okay? Um, and then this one, these two are gonna be 10 divided by the square root of two. Now, mama always told us never to go to a party with a square root in the denominator. So, and again, if you can do this in your head, that's fine. I'm just showing my steps. Okay, so that side is five square root of two. 
5 square root of 2, and the other side is 5 square root of 2, which makes sense because you think, again, if I multiply this by square root of 2, I get to 10. See? Yay. This is awesome. This is not the last time you're going to see this. Okay, so you can be like, this is dumb. I'm just going to learn it for the test and then ignore it. Oh, don't do that. You really should just learn this. <sighs> okay. One more of these kind of fun things, and then I think that will be enough for the moment. Okay, so we have a triangle, 60, 60, 60. Equilateral triangles. They're amazing. We're going to cut this one in half. Oh, and its sides are two. Sometimes when you see this example, they make the sides one, and then everything's in terms of halves, and I'm like, that's dumb. Why not just make the original triangle two? Anyway, here we go. So sides are two. Oh, look, we have half a triangle. Look at these animations in PowerPoint. I was really bored in a professional development session. All right, so essentially we have that and the dudes on the bottom, one and one, woohoo, look at that. So we have a squared, b squared is c squared. Um, obviously, the, obviously, the one we're missing is one of, the, one of the legs, so we can leave that there. We've got b is equal to the square root of three. Okay, so essentially now we have the same thing, but the ratios are a little bit different. So the 30 is opposite the shortest side, right? Which makes sense. The 90 is opposite the longest side. Now, square root of 3 in real life is something like 1.7-ish. Okay, so the 60 is opposite the 1.7-ish. So it's the middle angle, and it's kind of in the middle of 1 and 2. Okay, so as long as you kind of keep track that the angles are opposite the sides that kind of coordinate, ah, not that. So for me... Um, I don't worry about, stop it. No, you're just going to be a toot. Um, eraser. So really what I do when I'm looking at these is I'll be like, okay, so essentially I'll kind of pay attention to the idea that, um, derp, 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 that we've got the 90 is across from the hypotenuse and that's where the two is. So the two is opposite the, is on the hypotenuse and 30 is opposite the short side. So again, if I made this one 10, this one would be 20, and this one would be 10 times the square root of three. So the, the middle one is the short one times the square root of three. Okay, look at this, this is gonna be amazing. Okay, so for example, let's look at the first one. So the short side is 10. So when I look at these, if I'm doing this on a test, I'm always going for like, I need like partial credit or whatever. So if I'm going for 10, then that means the longest side is automatically 20. Okay, and then the middle east side is, um, now I said the short side is 10, I just kind of said that. It's because it's opposite the 30, that's how I know it's the short side. It's not because it looks short, it's just because it actually is labeled as the short side. I don't know why my little wiggly, things are wiggly, but they are. And so then the remaining side has to be 10 times the square root of three. Okay, now that's the easy one, so I gave you all the other ones to do because I'm amazing. So again, pause the video, see how many of those you can do, and I'm going to sing, I bought a crow to, not a crow, <laughs> why would I buy a crow? I bought an owl to try to scare some of the crows away from my dog food, and I don't know if it's, it appears to be working, but it's really cute because the crows get like within three feet of it, and then they like hide and run away. So I'm assuming that you paused it, or if not, you were so amused by my crow story, you couldn't possibly do math. Okay, so let's look at B. Now, if we look at B, this is the opposite the 60 side. So that's the middly one. So I always go from, I try to get to the short side as quickly as possible. So if I'm at middly, I want to get to short. So the way to get to short is to divide by three. A square root of three, sorry. I need to divide by the square root of three. So that just gives me six. And always at this point, I'm going to stop and make sure I did this right. So if I go from here to here, it should be times the square root of 3. Is that right? Yes. Okay, I got it. Now I just need to times 2 to get to the hypotenuse. Dunny bunnies. Happy? Okay. Now for our numbers, letter C. I'm at 18. That's got um, on the hypotenuse. Again, I'm going to try to get to the short side because that's what everything's kind of based on. That's the unit or the 1. So I know that I have to multiply by 2 to get to the hypotenuse, so that means I need to divide by 2 to get away from the hypotenuse. So let's see which one is supposed to be the short side. This is the 30, so this here is the short side, just to be sure. Okay, so 18, divide by 2 to get to the 9, 
and then 9 squared of 3 is the remaining side. Okay? All right, now, choopy doopy choopy doo. Next one for D. Um, again, I have the hypotenuse. So this is the 30. That means that this one over here is a four. Okay, so that means the remaining side is four squared of three. One, two, squared of three. Look at me, I'm kind of a genius. All right, and then this last one. Oh, this one's gonna be annoying because this is 13 and this is the 60 side. So I want to get to the little side as quickly as possible. So this is going to be 13 divided by the square root of 3. I don't think I would bring that one home to mother even if I didn't have a square root in the denominator. But, you know, maybe, maybe I should give it a chance. I don't know. 13 square root of 3 over 3. Yeah, I don't know if I can handle that kind of baggage in a relationship. Okay. So that's what this one is going to be. So 13 square root of 3 over 3. Why did I do that? That was such an unnecessarily complicated problem. And then I know the hypotenuse is double that. So double that's going to be 26 square root of 3 over 3. And I know that seems like a lot of work, but believe it or not, um, the only other way we would know how to do this, um, well, actually, in theory, if you don't know trig, there's no other way to do this. Um, but the only other way to do this is be with sines and cosines and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, there's all kinds of ways to play with this, but this is the basic gist is you kind of look at this and you go, okay, so I've got a base. I've got my one, um, you know, my one, two square to three. So these are the, these are the things you should memorize. Have these like written on your bathroom mirror in expo marker or whatever you call it, whiteboard marker. So one, two, square to three with your 30, 60, 90. Have your um, one, one, square to two with your 45, 45, 45. And then have your Pythagorean triples. Um, like if you're just getting started in engineering or math or anything like that, just write these on your bathroom mirror. So every time you see them, you're like, oh yeah, I should remember that. Or make them the background screen on your phone, just temporarily. Um, so that every time you turn your phone on, you see them. So. Yay, this will be fun. We're going to go do math. It's going to be great. All right, take care.